so today we will read about malaria which is caused by a parasites those parasites are uh, uh, a type of protozoa which are belonging to the class of sporozoa now that malaria can be caused by different agents the agents are plasmodium vivax plasmodium falciferum plasmodium ovale and the plasmodium malari and these different agents causes different types of malaria like plasmodium vivax causes benign tertian malaria plasmodium falciferum causes malignant tertian malaria and plasmodium will causes ovale tertian malaria but plasmodium malaria causes the quartan malaria the point to note here is that these three species these three species causes a type of tertian malaria causes a type of tertian malaria while plasmodium malaria causes quartan malaria what does that mean so tertian malaria means the tertian malaria means the fever occurs every third day okay so in uh, in those species vivax malaria and ovale the fever occurs every third day that's why they are called as tertian malaria while in plasmodium malaria the fever occurs every fourth day that's why it is called as the quartan malaria because quarter means four so that's why quartan malaria if we see the life cycle of the plasmodium then uh, in the life cycle we have the host the uh, so the life cycle of the malaria uh, the agent of the or the plasmodium completes in two types of host one is the definitive host the other one is the intermediate host so definitive host is that host in which the sexual cycle completes and intermediate is that in which the asexual cycle completes so the definitive host in case of plasmodium is the female anopheles mosquito because the sexual cycle completes in the female anopheles mosquito while the intermediate host is man because our sexual cycle completes in human next comes the infective form so the infective form may be the sporozoites so sporozoites are infective form when the transmission is occurring by the bite of infected female anopheles but the infective form is different the infective form is trophozoites and merozoites when the transmission is occurring during blood transfusion or transplantation so based on the mode of transmission of the infection the infective form varies it will be sporozoites if it spreads by the bite of the infected female anopheles it will be trophozoites and merozoites if uh, the malaria is transmitted by blood transfusion or organ transplantation from an infected person next comes the mode of transmission so yes mode of transmission in case of malaria is the bite of infected female anopheles the blood transfusion and the organ transplantation okay and the organ transplantation in case of human there are three stages so when the uh, parasite or the spore gets enter inside the human it passes through three stages the first stage is called as the pre erythrocytic stage so as the mosquito bites the sporozoites injected into the blood vessels they these those sporozoites reach to the liver and those sporozoites enter inside the hepatocytes via the circumsporozoic proteins so while with the help of this protein they enter inside the hepatocytes and the sporozoites then get converted into the trophozoites and those trophozoites after several nuclear division get converted into the pre erythrocytic season which is containing several merozoites okay and this whole process by which the trophozoites are converted into pre erythrocytic season are called as the schizogony is called as the schizogony and uh, after the formation of the pre erythrocytic season the hepatocytes rupture and the merozoites are released into the circulation merozoites are released into the circulation here we need to know one more point about the that is about the hypnozoites what is hypnozoites so hypnozoites are uh, are some of the sporozoites of the plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale 
which remain in the hepatocytes for year they remain hydrated inside the hepatocytes and they cause relapse in later years those are uh, those forms of sporozoids which are getting uh, i mean uh, hydrated in the hepatocytes they are called as hypnozoids after that comes the erythrocytic stage so next is the the second stage is erythrocytic stage so what happens in the erythrocytic stage so in the erythrocytic stage the merozoids and uh, those merozoids which has been released after the rupture of the hepatocytes they enter into the rbc via the glycophorin receptors via glycophorin receptors they enter inside the rbcs by the process of endocytosis okay by the process of endocytosis then uh, in the rbcs the merozoids are getting converted into the trophozoites and early trophozoite appear as signet ring the early trophozoite appear as signet ring the late uh, and then those um, after the formation of the trophozoites which are called as the early trophozoite they appear as signet ring when these early trophozoites uh remain in the blood after uh, for a long duration they uh, are called as late trophozoites and in the late trophozoites they uh, take up the ring form which uh, is also called as the amoeboid form okay so there is a appearance like amoeba with a vacuole inside the rbc and uh, it is also called as the uh, ring form okay i mean the ring form which which was the early trophozoite stage that ring form is converted into the amoeboid form in case of uh, in the late trophozoite stage then the plasmodium eats the hemoglobin in the rbcs and convert the hemoglobin into hematin and iron also the late trophozoites undergo asexual reproduction and produce merozoites which are arranged in the rosette form these are called as the erythrocytic schizont and as the erythrocytic schizont is getting formed that's why the stage is called as the erythrocytic stage okay so the erythrocytic schizont is formed inside the rbcs after the multiplication of the late trophozoite inside the rbcs then after the formation of the erythrocytic schizont the rbcs rupture the rbcs in which the um, that erythrocytic schizont has been formed that rb those rbcs get ruptured and that leads to release of the merozoites and the malarial pigment and each merozoite can initiate a new cycle and as the rbcs rupture there is a release of the toxins and the hematin and iron and that's why they are occur the malarial paroxysm of fever that's why the fever occurs on the third day so rbc is uh, rup get ruptured after a cycle of 3 days that means the rbc the cycle of the plasmodium is the is about 3 days that's why when the rbc uh, when the cycle completes the rbc is ruptured and on the third day the fever occurs okay so the duration of cycle is 3 days next comes the gametogony okay uh, before going to the third uh, third stage in the human that is gametogony uh, one more important point is that in falci plasmodium falciparum only ring form is seen okay sorry so in plasmodium falciparum only ring form is seen in the peripheral smear and uh, the later stages occur in the capillaries of the brain that's why the plasmodium falciparum causes cerebral malaria and that's why we cannot see the erythrocytic schizont or the late trophozoite in the peripheral blood we can only see the ring stage in the peripheral blood not the erythrocytic schizont in case of falciparum infection so the third stage is the gametogony so some merozoites enter into the rbcs and get converted into the gametocytes 
so there are two types of gametocytes one is the male gamete and the female gamete okay male gamete and the female gametocytes so uh, there is a special shape of these gametes in all other species the gametocytes are round in shape while in case of falciparum the gametocytes are banana shaped okay and the gametocytes infective form to mosquitoes these gametocytes are the infective form to the mosquitoes in the mosquitoes what happens so the next stage is the mosquitoes so in the mosquitoes what happens is that the asexual form which is the gametocyte i mean the asexual forms get digested those mirozoites trophozoites those get uh, digested in the mosquitoes while the sexual forms which are the male gametes male, male gametocytes and the female gametocytes so the male gametocyte undergoes x flagellation to become motile and the female gametocytes remain as such in the gut of the mosquito and there the male and the female gametocytes unite to form the zygote zygote converted into oocyte oocyte converted into oocyst each oocyst has four sporozoites so when the oocyst ruptures the sporozoites are released and these sporozoites go and rest into the salivary gland of the mosquito so that when that mosquito bites a human the sporozoites from the salivary gland of the mosquito get uh, entry inside the human body so that's when the sporozoites get stored into the salivary gland of the mosquito so this is the whole cycle of the plasmodium life cycle of the plasmodium so it is a pictorial depiction of the pictorial depiction of the uh, of the life cycle of the plasmodium so see here the mosquito bites so the mosquito bites here and after the bite of the mosquito the you know there is inoculation of the sporozoites into the circulation the sporozoites enter into the hepatocytes within 30 minutes and that leads to the formation of the preerythrocytic seasons in the preerythrocytic stage okay after the preerythrocytic stage there occurs rupture and the merozoites are released the merozoites after release enter into the erythrocytic stage so in the erythrocytic stage they enter into the rbc the merozoites get entry into the rbcs they converted into ring form ring form to amoeboid form after amoeboid form there is formation of the erythrocytic season that erythrocytic season when ruptures leads to release of the erythrocytic merozoites remember the merozoites which are released here are the hepatocytic merozoites and these are the erythrocytic merozoites which are released from the erythrocytic season okay and these erythrocytic merozoites are converted into the gametocytes so before uh, before that here we see that after the preerythrocytic stage some of the sporozoites inside the hepatocytes remain in the form of hypnozoites that is a dormant form they remain there and after many years they cause relapse again come to our point uh, that is the erythrocytic merozoites some of them get converted into the gametocytes and they enter into the mosquitoes by the blood meal by mosquito they undergoes fertilization converted into zygote then oocyte then oocyst in the oocyst meiosis occurs there uh, then uh, the sporozoites are formed then the sporozoites enter into the salivary glands and again by the mosquitoes right they are inoculated into the human body so that is the whole life cycle of the plasmodium from the mosquito to the uh, human body that's that's all for the malaria part one next we'll see in the part two of malaria